Okay. So thank you for joining me on this video session. And I just want to say this is uh, what you're looking at here is uh, my new website, uh, portfolio website. It's coming along really well. I'm very happy with it. It's looking so much better. I love the images, the videos, and I think that it's coming along nicely. Um, I'm going to continue working on my application. Right now, all of my images are hard-coded, meaning I'm calling them from the asset pipeline. If you're not familiar with the Rails asset pipeline, I do have a couple videos uh, that uh, I've placed below in the comments section where I go over them. Feel free to watch those. Uh, in this video, I want to specifically walk through on how I can create an image uploader that allows me to upload images that I can use for my portfolio items. To integrate image uploading, I'm going to utilize a number of libraries to make that happen. So first, and let me open up my rubygems.org. So first is going to be dot env. Let's try that again. There you go. I believe .env Rails, I believe is the one. So .env, and it's gonna allow, this one's gonna allow me uh, to securely manage my credentials. And uh, technically, I can use my secrets file, but in production apps, you're most likely gonna be using a dedicated resources like uh, .env. And second, I'm going to be integrating the carrier wave gem. So I'll go ahead and open another rubygems.org carrier wave. Oh, why is it come on? Carrier wave. I think specifically though it's gonna be carrier wave AWS. Um, and uh, this library, um, carrier wave, um, specifically uh, has a special AWS connection. And um, then I'm gonna use the, the regular carrier wave, this one here. And um, that one is the library that's going to manage everything. And then fourth, I believe this is the final one, I'm going to be using, it's called Mini, Mini Magic. Yep. I'm using Mini Magic. And Mini Magic uh, is a requirement in order to use a number of the methods provided by Carrier Wave. And then, fifth, I'm going to be utilizing AWS. Um, now, you can sign up for an AWS account, and you will have to provide some type of payment information. Uh, but that's going to allow you to upload and store images on AWS. And if you can't do that, um, I will be providing an option where you can upload images straight into your application. However, if you do that, you're not going to be able to use Heroku to deploy to the web because Heroku doesn't allow you to upload images into your application itself. Heroku will, act will actually get rid of them. Now, using AWS, and I want to show you have it here in my Firefox. That's my AWS account that you see there. Using that AWS is optional. Um, and I'm going to run through on how to use it. So you may want to sign up for an AWS account if you want. And the URL to do that is um, aws.amazon.com. Now you may see something different there, that's because I'm already in the S3 console, Amazon S3 service. Uh, that's the service I'm gonna be using. Um, and you can create an account there and have access to that AWS console. Now, uh, I wanna talk about what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna open up the, let me see if I already have this up. Close that. I'm gonna open up my gem file. Alrighty. Okay, this is my jump file. And 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste Carrier Wave and Mini Magic below in the gem file. Um, and then I'm going to do, uh, well, I'm going to do Carrier Wave, AWS, Mini Magic, Carrier Wave, and then dot .env Rails. So let me just go ahead and do that. <clears throat> so copy that to clipboard. Copy that. Uh, And then next, what did I say? Mini magic. Make sure I get that. Magic. Let me close these as I'm doing them. And the regular carrier wave. And then lastly, the dot DNV rails. Oh, I need to put there. All right, let's save that. All right, so I've copied all those to my gem file. And now what I do is I go to the terminal and shut the, shut it down and run a bundle install. Just waiting for it to run that process. And once, once that's done, it'll be live in the app. And then when I have those ready, uh, I can start building out the basic uh, functionality. And I'm going to go to the carrier wave documentation page in GitHub. So there, there you see that process is done. So let me go ahead to carrier wave documentation. There it is. And there you see carrier wave. This gem provides a simple and extremely flexible way to upload files from Ruby applications. It works well with Rack-based web applications such as Ruby on Rails. <clears throat> All right, so there we are. And um, what I'm really concerned about is the installation process. Um, so I did this here in Rails. I added this to the gem file. And let's see. I don't really care much about generating uh, uploader avatar. That's not really what I want to do. Let's look at my notes. See what it, it is. That I want to do. Um, let's see. I want to. What I want to do is a portfolio uploader. Actually, so actually, it's similar to this. So I will copy this. I'll be going to, but instead of avatar. I'll be typing in portfolio. So I want Rails generate uploader portfolio. And that's what I want to do. And this is going to create a file. <clears throat> Let me hit enter. This is going to create a file that's going to be in app uploaders. And it's going to be called portfolio underscore uploader um, dot RB. And there it is right there. And then I'm going to go ahead to that file. We got app uploaders portfolio uploader.rb. And I'm going to uncomment the extension whitelist. Let me see where it is. Uh, there it is. And what you can do is you can actually um, see. So, what I did there, I did command, I put the, the cursor right in front of uh, def and I did a uh, command and then I clicked on down um, and that creates that big line you see there. And then I just back, backspace and it um, deletes the, it uncomments it basically. And what this is going to do is give me a nice set of validation options. So for example, if you try to upload a file that is not either JPG, JPEG, uh, GIF file, or PNG, uh, it's gonna throw an, an error, which is what I want, because uh, I only want the right files to be stored, or else I might run into an error where I store, an, an, for example, an Illustrator file. And even if it allowed me to upload it, it may get an error when rendering it, since HTML doesn't know how to render an Illustrator file. Um, I, I'm, Excuse me, I always use something like this because it's nice and handy. If 
referring to the whitelist. So now I want to go to my portfolio.rb, okay, uh, which is my model file, by the way. And now I have to set up a mapping between my uploader and the database. And so uh, let me look at my schema file real quick. So if I look at my uh, schema file, and particularly the portfolios table, I have a main image and I have a thumb image. So I have both of those. <clears throat> and I'm gonna use these to be able to have my uploader and those are the files that are going to manage it. Um, they're, um, they're not gonna store the images themselves because it's a very bad practice to try to store images in a database, but they will store a link that points to the image. All right, so the syntax of adding this is, uh, I'm gonna do here, let's see. Gotta place the syntax under validates presence of. And uh, let's see, actually, it's not doing that. It's called mount uploader, and then thumb image, and portfolio, there it is, portfolio upload. So mount uploader um, tells the portfolio that it needs to call carrier wave because mount underscore uploader is a special method provided by carrier wave and the uploader will apply uh, to the thumb image and it's going to use the portfolio uploader. Now, why am I doing this? Why did I just do that there? Um, well, imagine a scenario where you have an application that has an uploader, that has a whitelist for certain image files, but then you also have a file uploader for PDF files or, or something like that. You wouldn't want an uploader handling those two different file, those two different types of files uh, simultaneously. You want to separate your image uploader from your non-image uploader just so you can be specific about your whitelist, your formatting, and so on. So I'm going to repeat this again, except this time this is going to be main image. <clears throat> now, with those in place, I can go and customize the form, which uh, I haven't done yet. So let me go ahead and start up my Rails server to ensure I haven't broken anything and then I'll take a look at the form. So, let's see. I will be going to, uh, I want this thing to move. You probably can't, can't see it, but I see it. There we go. Um, okay, so we're gonna do, we're gonna go to portfolios. Now, what you're seeing here, I was gonna to wait to talk about this, but the placeholders are gone, and that's good. That means Carrier Wave is doing its job, and I'll, I'll explain that in, in a minute. Um, but we're gonna to go to, to new. Ah, I need to be logged in. That's good, that's good. That means this application has been built in the correct way, by me, so when I try to go to new, it won't let me because I was logged out. It just redirected me to the home page. So that was actually very good behavior. I'll go to portfolios. Portfolios. And let's see. All right, everything's looking good. And now I should be able to do new. Uh, let's see. Hmm. A little bug here, defining the variable. Ah, I know why. That is in portfolio's form. Okay, I will be going. There we go. I'll be going into this file eventually, anyway. So. And 
and by adding form, that should take care of that. There we go. So basically, what I did there, that how I fixed that little bug. Um, if I pass in form in here, then when I'm developing the actual form, uh, inst I can't have what I had before an F. Um, otherwise, for that to be an F, it would have to be an F in here. But if I put place form in there, then this has to be form. And so that's how I knew to correct that. Okay, so here we are. And let me pull up my notes. <clears throat> so I'm logged in. I opened up the form partial. Well, I'm going to open up. I did open it up, the form partial there. Um, and so now below, um, I think I'm going to put it below subtitle. See title and subtitle put it below here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add two form group divs and I'm gonna add a special helper method called the file file field. So let me just go ahead and create this and I'll uh, explain it in a minute. Oh. All right. Class form group and And then here, so, hmm, I believe this should be form as well, call file, field, and main image. And then this one, Ruby form, file, Field um, image. All right, so now I have to go to my portfolios controller. Portfolio controller. And here um, I have to add these in my strong params. So inside of portfolio params, uh, hold on, let me take a good look at this. There we go, yeah. Inside of here, I'm going to have to add name image and thumb image, comma. And now, if I hit refresh, I should be good to go. Okay. So I have them kind of in the wrong place. And Let's see, I'm not gonna to spend too much time on that. That's more of a styling issue here. Hmm. Interesting. I'm not gonna worry about that now. I'll take care of that. I'll probably take care of this uh, offline because um, I wanna continue with this lesson. That's not a big deal there. Um, Okay, so now I'm gonna be uploading some images just to test it out. And this is gonna be local, so there's no reason to load all the images that you want right now. So I'm just gonna pick some random images, but hopefully something that looks kinda of neat. So, let's see. Hmm, I'll go ahead and upload that one. And then, <laughs> I'll go ahead and up upload that one too. All right. And let's see what's next on the list. Uh, okay. All right. So yeah. So again, um, don't start uploading all the images that you want at this stage. That's something that needs to be done after this application is deployed to the web because the web is gonna have its own database. And so once I click over here, save portfolio item, let's see. Hmm. All right, so I have to click on there. Um, and I'm not sure if that worked or not. Um, there may be a few bugs, but that's okay. Um, let me go back to let's see if you all portfolio items. Okay, 
So I'm not seeing that the image is uploaded. So that's something I want to take a look at because I don't mind if the other ones didn't upload, but the one that I just popped in there should. So put this on pause, see if I can figure out uh, what went on there. Okay, guys, uh, so it took me um, probably like a minute and 30 seconds to figure out uh, what happened. Actually, I technically didn't figure out what was happening. Um, I looked through the code, and so as you saw earlier, the, um, the buttons for uploading the images were misaligned, and I'll show you that I, I did indeed fix that. So I'll do forward slash new, and as you see there, now they look nice and aligned the way they should. Um, and so then I just decided, well, let me go ahead and redo what I did um, while I was recording, which uh, was to upload those images. Now the difference was that this time I actually filled out title, subtitle, body, and the technologies used. And when I saved it, I actually did get the image. So, it, so yes, in a sense, I did figure out what was going on. Um, I had to fill out those fields in order for the image uh, to upload. And so here is um, the uh, thumb image that I uploaded. And then if you click on title of image, uh, you get the, the main image. And now of course you're still seeing uh, a bug there, but again, just like I fixed uh, the last bug, I'll be able to fix this one as well. That's just part of uh, development. Uh, you get these bugs and you fix them. Uh, we're problem solvers um, in this field, is what we do. Okay, um, so um, let me go back, and the first thing you're gonna see is that all the other placeholder images are gone, and I mentioned that before, and that means that Carrier Wave is working. Carrier Wave is very picky about the images that are showing up, so I can't use my placeholders in my model file, in my portfolio.rb file anymore. Uh, I'm going to have to move that into a helper method, uh, but I'm going to worry about that later. The other issue is that the images are really big and bulky, um, so in particular the main image, and it's crossing over and just kind of taking over uh, the whole screen. Um, so I need to go and fix this. So what I'm going to do is go to my portfolio show page. So portfolio show all right I'm in my portfolio show page and let me try to move this a bit here right there all right um, and uh, I'm here at the portfolio show page um, because that's where uh, my image is so the easiest way to manage this is right at the very end um, <clears throat> and so let's see. Uh, uh, so what I'm going to add here. So right at the e very end of the image tag, I'm going to add a width and in a string. Make that 100. Uh, and if I hit refresh, that should fix that. So let me go ahead and hit refresh. Okay. Hmm. All right, so it made it really small, made it almost like a, an actual, uh, yeah, let's see, what if I make that 90%? That, 90%, does that make it smaller? What happens if I make it 120? Oh, that's interesting. I'm gonna make it the width 200. Huh. Let's double that. Make it 800. Seven. Stupid. Looks like probably six should do it. All right, six looks good. And that's not necessarily going to happen with your image. It just so happens that it occurred with this particular image. I'm not sure of the size of this image. I really didn't look at that before making uh, this video. I just 
grab the first images that were uh, in my hard drive uh, just to get this uh, video done. Um, okay, <clears throat> so I did that. Um, now I think it would be worthwhile to create a new class um, after a container. Uh, so here, like after container, create something called portfolio dash container. And if I do that, I am gonna have to put that in the portfolio.scss um, file all the way at the end. And this is a class. Right. Um, and so we're gonna make this, see if we make padding top. And I'm doing this because as you see here, it, uh, you know, it's touching this border, the top border of this image is touching the nav bar. So, let's see, it's, uh, there we go. Now, of course, that's gonna break some other things because it, uh, that new class uh, doesn't exist everywhere. So, um, if I, you know, if I go to the form, it's not, it's not going to be working. So if I do forward slash edit, yeah, see no route matches, uh, get portfolio, um, et cetera. All right. So what I'm going to have to do is, um, I'm going to have to go to new. Uh, so where am I in this thing here? Let me close this out. Just let me make sure I have this copied portfolio container class. And I do have it in there. This is portfolio's controller. I can close that. Close schema. You go to new. I have to place it in there. And then I believe I have to go to edit. I think I have to change that as well. Now to portfolio container. All right, so everything should be working as expected now. All right, I'm still getting no route matches. Hmm. Go back here. You have portfolios. Just look at my notes real quick. Make sure I covered everything. Uh, ah, that's what it was. I have to add here the S and then edit. There we go. So actually, you didn't get to see uh, how it was before, but this was pushed up. Uh, this right here pushed up against that border. <clears throat> All right, so let's uh, move on here. So everything is working as expected. It's looking a lot better. And so before I end this video, I want to show exactly where the image went. Um, obviously, we haven't, we haven't connected it to the outside world yet. Uh, so we need to find it in our app. So I'm going to go to my editor. And I'll be going to public folder is what I'm looking at. Let's see, where's my public? public. Where is my public folder? But you guys see it and I don't close this out. There it is, public, and then uploads, and then portfolio. And you see main image 15, thumb image 15. All right, and you see that there inside each of these. Now, how did Ruby on Rails know how to do all that? The secret is in the portfolio underscore uploader. And here we go, over here. And uh, specifically, this piece of code here, the store directory, which creates a dynamic path. Um, it creates the path of, of the folder of uploads, and it takes the model class and turns it into a string, 
So that's what this, this means here. And uploads, take model class, turn it to a string, to string, <clears throat> and then adds underscore, which in my case, uh, it's not really relevant because um, it's just going to name it portfolio. Um, and, uh, and then it says, hey, you know, convert this into a string and lowercase it and whatnot, and now make it a portfolio. Uh, the underscore is no big deal, like I said, because it's just going to be por portfolio. But in the case where there's more than one word, uh, it'll make more sense. And then next is mounted as, um, which is the name of the parameter. All right. So in my case, that's going to be main underscore image and thumb underscore image. And lastly, I have the ID. And the ID is taking in the number. So say that uh, you're storing an application and you're using hosting from DigitalOcean or um, Linode, uh, which uh, is my former employer, by the way, or some provider like that. Then what I have done so far is uh, all I would need to do at this point. Um, <clears throat> I'd, pr I'd basically be good to go and I don't need to do anything else. However, this is not always the best uh, solution for certain hosting providers. Heroku, for example, um, is fantastic with Rails application hosting and it's what I'm gonna use later on. Heroku is really good at being efficient and the way it's efficient is by not allowing you to do things exactly like this. You can't upload a giant video file because it can bog down their own servers so if you tried this on Heroku, it would upload, and then within a few seconds or minutes, it would disappear. So all this would only work temporarily. I just wanted to show you one option. Um, for example, if you don't plan on deploying it to the web, then you can just do what I did here. Or if you're using DigitalOcean or Linode, you can just do what I did here. But later, <clears throat> I plan on showing you how to create something and store these files on a remote server and use something that is dedicated purely to file hosting, such as the uh, S3 system via Amazon Web Services. All right, so let me go ahead and save my work here. I'm gonna shut down, shut down the server, get status. And so if I move my Cameo from here, you can see a lot of different files that I worked on for this video. I'm gonna go ahead and add them all. And then get commit and imp implemented initial oops initial file uploading system via carrier wave for portfolio items. All right, and then git push origin image management. There we are. Great, now I'm ready to start connecting my uploader with an outside server, and I will see you in that video. Thanks for watching.